Look at this chart. The figures show percent changes in maternal mortality over a century-long period starting in 1784. Now, if you focus on AKH Vienna, you'll see that there was actually a precipitous drop somewhere in the mid-century when we isolate for several factors. We discover that it probably had something to do with the discovery of the infectious properties of medical equipment by Dr. Ignaz Semmelweis <laughs> in the mid-century. This had a major effect on women everywhere. <laughs> okay. That opening was just awful. <laughs> I started tuning Garrett out probably within the first few seconds of his speech, and I'm guessing most of you did too. So why are openings so important? Well, it turns out multiple studies have shown that we have about 10 seconds to make a good first impression. That means if our first slide and the first few sentences out of our mouth don't capture our audience's attention, we've probably lost them. <coughs> now, in Akash Karia's book, how to deliver a great TED Talk, he suggests three techniques to open your speech to capture your audience's attention. Now, one technique is to open with a story. Melody Hobson started her TED Talk with a story about being mistaken for a server at an event in which she was a panelist. Our brains are wired for storytelling, and so when we hear a story, we create a connection between us and the speaker, and it makes that speech that much more memorable for us. Another technique is to begin with a quote. Elizabeth Pisani started her TED Talk with the quote, people do stupid things. That's what spreads HIV. The quote was short, relevant, provocative, but not one that's been overused. And it was impactful because it was from an authority on HIV, and it was her words. A third technique is to start your talk with a question. M Kelly McGonigal began her TED Talk with questions on how much stress each person in the audience had experienced in the past year. By asking questions and giving people the time to think of a response, she engaged her audience and made her talk more relevant for them. Now, you don't need to utilize all of these techniques in your speech, but incorporating just one of these elements into your talk will help you capture your audience's attention and make it more memorable, impactful, and engaging from the start. So, Garrett, do you want to give it another shot? Sure, I'll try. Imagine it's 1849, and you're lying in a hospital bed. It's actually a very uncomfortable bed, more like a cart. And you look to your left and to your right, and you see a row of women who, like you, have been pregnant for about nine months. And you know that today is going to be a very important day in your life. A nurse carts you into a smaller room. It's very cramped. And you smell iodine. It's a pungent, horrible odor. You hear cries and screams from a hallway, and you wonder, as the doctor comes in with giant forceps and this metal, this scary metal device, is this going to be my last day on Earth? Actually, the question is a very relevant one. If you're a woman in Vienna in 1849 and you're expecting a child, your chance of dying in the next 48 hours is one in five. That means that if there are 50 women giving birth, 10 of them will be dead within the next 48 hours. But that all changed in the next year with the discovery of the infectious properties of medical equipment, that sharing medical equipment from corpses to live women giving birth caused infection, which killed mothers. This caused maternal mortality rates to drop to one in 50. It was very significant. But this was all contingent on the communication skills of one doctor named Ignaz Semmelweis. Now I think that we can all agree that that was a much better opening. Strong openings allow us to connect with our audience and set the tone for the rest of our presentation. Strong closings, however, are no less important. Allow me to demonstrate by finishing the story. Dr. Simmelweis was an early pioneer of antiseptic practices in hospitals. However, he waited 10 years to publish his results. His results were rejected 
by the medical community because they had no basis in current theory. He castigated his colleagues, accusing them of murder, and they in turn conspired to have him committed to a mental institution where he died two weeks later of an infection. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure, pleasure presenting for you today. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Wait a minute. Dr. Semmelweis's story may have had an abrupt and bad ending, but that's no way to end a presentation. <laughs> Conclusions are just as important as introductions. Oftentimes we spend so much time designing and preparing our beginnings that then we rush through and forget our endings. But the last words out of your mouth are going to be what your audience remember when they walk out of the door. So your conclusion should contain your central message so it's freshest in your listener's mind. In his book, Karya also gives us three techniques we can use to end presentations effectively. Can anyone tell me where this quote is from? That's right. This is the last line of the Gettysburg Address. In this speech, which is now cited as one of the most famous speeches in all of history, Lincoln ended and left his listeners with a message of hope as big and bright as the Civil War was dark and painful. 200 years later, we still remember this message of hope. So the first task that, our, that Karya gives us is to end with a hope for a better future. Second, sell the benefits. 1,000 songs in your pocket. We all remember this catchphrase from Steve Jobs' Apple product launch that we watched earlier this quarter. By re repeating this line, 1,000 songs in your pocket, over and over, he made sure that his audience knew the benefit they would get if they bought that iPod Nano. And three, call to action. Ultimately, your conclusion should have some sort of instructions for your audience to take away and act on. Whether that's to learn CPR, to submit your self-critique on time, or to wash your hands before surgery, your call to action should be simple and easy to remember. Simple and easy to remember. That's not exactly how I would describe the previous slide. <laughs> When I say the words business presentation, what connotations come to mind? Boring, difficult to remember, maybe death by PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. um, we, can do much, we can do much better than that by using these simple, these simple techniques, we can, create, we can create beginnings that compel our audiences and endings that leave our audiences with what we want them to remember. To me, the moral of the story of Dr. Simmelweis is that how we communicate really matters. He was right, but he failed to persuade. The way you communicate is important. Your life may not depend on it, but your effectiveness as a business person surely does.